morning. My name is Jason with the Red Hat Developers Program. This morning I'd like to introduce Benjamin Cabay from the Eclipse IoT Foundation, and he's going to be giving a speech on building the Internet of Things with open source. To be here and kick off Red Hat Summit with some uh, cool Eclipse IoT content. Um, so, in case you're not familiar, and just to make sure that we're all on, on the same page, um, I want to briefly present what's the kind of typical um, architecture for IoT. It's nothing super um, super exceptional, I guess. Um, you get um, when you do IoT, you want to connect. I still get lots of like it's. Let's see. Let's see. Better. Better. It's better. All right. Uh, thanks, Jason, for the introduction. Um, very happy to be here. Let's really doing it again. Is this okay? Let's see. Um, I'm going to speak just for a little while, just to make sure it's fixed. Looks like it is. Um, all right, third take. Um, all right, thanks, Jason. Thanks very much for the introduction. I'm really happy to be here and talk about um, Eclipse IoT. Uh, before jumping into actual IoT meet, um, I would just like to make sure that we're all on the same page regarding what um, what a typical IoT architecture is, uh, the way we see it, and I don't think it, this is new. Uh, you have the devices on the field, right? The, the billions of devices of the IoT, that's where they are, the sensors that you're going to use to monitor temperature, humidity, whatever. Um, so this is typically uh, very constrained devices um, that probably don't have internet connectivity, actually. So you, you will use uh, some kind of gateway to take the data from those sensors to the good old internet. And what's in the internet, what's in the cloud? Well, it's typically the good old cloud, except that maybe you will require some, some specific services that are, that are specific to IoT. So again, the, the way we see it uh, is that you really need three different IoT, uh, three, three software stacks for IoT on the constraint devices. It's all going to be about uh, providing some kind of remote management capabilities, so as you can upgrade your uh, your microcontrollers uh, when when you need to. Like especially if we're talking billion devices, uh, it's actually important to be able to to um, to upgrade the devices. Uh, security also is, a, is an important aspect. Um, the, the communication communication layer. Are, are, how are you going to be able to make your your devices uh, talk to the gateways? Uh, that that's what the constraint device stack is about. Uh, at the gateway level, it's all about turning um, the raw information into actual meaningful messages. So on, a, um, on an IoT gateway, uh, think essentially a, a router on steroids. So you need network, network management, but ideally you need more. You need the ability to, to do um, a store and forward kind of mechanism, right? You, you, you get data from the sensors. You want to route the, this data to, to the internet. What happens if the, the cellular network is down or if your Wi-Fi stack is down? So that's that's the role of the gateway, and then uh, comes the, the cloud. So like I said, good old cloud, uh, like the, the, the foundation, the, the PaaS. Here we're talking OpenShift, we're talking Kubernetes, Docker, whatever. But then the kind of services that you require are, uh, some of them are actually IoT specific. How do you manage um, your, your fleet of device? Like you need some kind of device registry. How do you manage um, the, the huge data store? A, a data store that ideally needs to cope with the fact that um, maybe your solution will will um, will need to manage um, home automation related data, and in terms of um, of structure, in terms of of, um, of volume of data, it might be very very different from uh, data coming from an industrial automation scenario, right? So those are those are the kind of services uh, for the cloud stack, and of course there are some cross layer concerns, uh, things like security. Uh, modeling, uh, data semantics, uh, everything, tools and IDE uh, are, are, of course, also very important. Um, and just like in, in thinking in terms of stack, the idea is really to make sure that your IoT architecture is going to be modular. Like each um, each stack, like the device, the, the gateway, the cloud, ideally, they're not uh, dependent on one another, right? I want to be able to use a gateway from, uh, from manufacturer A with um, AWS IoT just the same that I would use it with Azure IoT. I don't want to have like a strong uh, coupling there. Um, modularity within the stack as well. I want to replace uh, the communication layer of my gateway uh, from MQTT to say HTTP2, right? It, there needs to be some modularity in there as well. And long story short, uh, we believe that open source can help there. It's like the past has, has shown that it, 
it works well for the good old internet to have to have open source and modularity to, to enable uh, those uh, those basic those characteristics basically. So that's what we do at Eclipse. That's what we do at Eclipse IoT. We've been doing it for five years now. So Eclipse IoT is an initiative within the Eclipse Foundation, uh, and yet today uh, it's uh, 30 plus uh, member companies, 30 open source different open source projects and I'm going to spend the next few minutes basically doing some name dropping if you will just like you guys are familiar with what's out there what's available for doing device stuff gateway stuff uh, cloud stuff lots of code is being developed uh, the community is very very active lots of developers um, like either working for for large companies or hobbyists as well we we, we have a, a nice mix of both actually and so, yeah, going into the, the, the name dropping, like I said, uh, on, the, on the devices, like on the super constrained devices, think Arduino, if you will, like a constrained uh, microcontroller. Some of the relevant uh, initiatives there um, at Eclipse would be a project like Eclipse Wakahama. Uh, is, uh, it's a stack for doing lightweight M2M, lightweight M2M being a standard for device management. Uh, what does it mean? Well, uh, things like over the air firmware grade, things like being able to um, manage over the year um, the health of your devices, what's the battery level, what's the, the available memory, things like that. Uh, a standard is out there and the reference implementation is at Eclipse as part of Eclipse Wakahama. Um, everything MQTT, you want to do PubSub in a scalable, reliable way. MQTT is probably uh, a protocol you will want to look at. Um, Eclipse Paho provides a very nice, very um, efficient embedded implementation of the protocol. Um, edge, and I guess I should have started bottom up. Um, at, at the hardware abstraction level, uh, if you look at Eclipse Edge, you'll actually find something very cool to have Android for IoT, if you will. I should stop saying that now, uh, now that Android things is a thing, actually. But um, uh, yeah, Edge is essentially a bunch of Java APIs for, um, uh, for your microcontroller. So it's a, a very, very nice project, and it runs on very constrained devices. Jumping into gateways, uh, Eclipse Cura. If you haven't heard about Eclipse Cura already, you should check it out. Uh, you can run Cura on, say, an Intel Edison, a Raspberry Pi. And what it essentially does, back to my point earlier, it brings you a gateway on a, a router on steroids. So it does all, all the good things that a, um, a router should do in terms of like managing the firewall, um, establishing VPNs and whatnot. But on top of that, it provides an application container for IoT, which means uh, you have a way to extend uh, Cura and leverage the, the built-in support for protocols such as Bluetooth, Low Energy, Modbus, um, OPC UA, you name it, to build your own applications that will take data from devices and route the data to the cloud without having to, to deal with the, the complexity of what happens if the network is unreliable, how do I store the data locally and stuff like that. This comes um, right with Cura. Another um, kind of stack you might want to look at regarding um, uh, for, for devices, for gateways, sorry, is uh, Eclipse Smart Home. So for everything home automation, uh, you can get a stack out of, um, out of Eclipse Smart Home where you will have built-in support for uh, the protocols that are relevant for home automation, uh, Philips, uh, Smart, Philips Hue, LeafX, whatever, um, um, and Zigbee, Z-Wave, etc. And all the, all the mechanisms for your, uh, the rules that you might want to have within your house, right? If, if temperature in the bathroom is above uh, 70 Fahrenheit, I want to turn on the heating, stuff like that. So a very mature project. And one thing that I should mention is that it's actually also shipping into production, just like Cura is. Um, uh, Deutsche Telekom, for example, they are uh, shipping Eclipse Smart Home in their own um, home automation boxes, and they are uh, selling uh, commercial solutions on, on top of Smart Home. Moving to the, to the cloud, Eclipse Kapua. Eclipse Kapua is microservices for, for IoT cloud. So the, the, the foundation for um, what is um, an IoT data store in the first place? What is an IoT device registry? So all those APIs are defined uh, by Kapua and uh, implementations of those services are provided as well. So for the data store, for example, uh, you can get um, an implementation that relies on uh, Elasticsearch for, for, for storing the data. For uh, the device registry, you may want to, to reuse uh, Eclipse projects such as Eclipse Hawkbit. Device management you might want to try and hook up uh, Eclipse Kapua to Eclipse Leshan, which provides the lightweight M2M stack for, for servers. So that's, that's Kapua, and the nice thing is, uh, as you can see at the bottom of, of the chart, is uh, it runs on lots of uh, paths. So you can run um, Eclipse Kapua 
straight on Docker, you can run it on, on OpenShift, you can run it on Cloud Foundry, and, and so that's really nice, especially when you're, when you're thinking microservices, right? So how do you scale your data store if you really need way more uh, nodes to, to, to cope with, the, with the, the volume of data you, that you need to, to store? Um, so lots of name dropping, and I'm barely halfway through. There's 30 different projects, so I've, I've tried to map uh, some of the, the Eclipse um, IoT projects to, to the, the different uh, functional um, components, the functional layers of, of each stack. So many other projects that I didn't mention, like, like Californium for doing co-op, like Tiny DTLS or Kitty for everything security, lots of stuff going on, but we actually go beyond just um, um, providing open source code. Like many foundations do that, many open source communities do. Uh, you can get lots of stuff from straight from GitHub as well, I guess. But we do more in terms of community building and ecosystem building. Uh, one thing is, and in no particular order, is uh, we ran a contest, um, hack challenges, if you will. Uh, we actually did a third, uh, the third edition of our Open IoT Challenge uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, you can actually look at the results on our website. But in a nutshell, um, people are building great things uh, for IoT and using open source software. The winner actually uses um, Cura, um, Eclipse Vertex, as well as uh, other projects to help um, track sleep patterns for, uh, for people who have um, bipolar uh, disorder, who have ba basically mental illness, and uh, they figured out a way to actually help detect when someone is going to be in a, in a bad mood. And I think that's really exciting to see what people are building thanks to, um, to open source software. Another um, activity that's going on is the virtual IoT meetup. You might be familiar with the virtual JAG. We just stole the idea uh, from, from Simon Maple, um, uh, who's the, who's the, the invader, inventor of virtual JAG. So basically every other week, we would uh, run a webinar with an IoT um, a thought leader. Uh, and so you can look at, look at the website and all the, all the history of all the, the, the videos we've produced. This is really a great resource for people interested in learning about IoT. And last but not least, uh, something that's uh, that started very recently, actually, an initiative called the Open IoT Test Beds. And here, actually, at Summit this week, we are showing uh, the first <coughs> IoT test bed around asset tracking management. The idea is that, and you've seen a very concrete example, there's lots of projects, uh, lots of different open source components. How do you effectively use them to build some, something concrete, something real? How, how are you supposed to, to combine Cura with Capua with maybe other uh, commercial projects uh, and, and vendor solutions, commercial hardware. How do you do that? That's what we're showing um, this week, and you can learn certainly learn more on our website as well. So for asset tracking, in a nutshell, the idea is that you have very valuable um, uh, cargo, valuable parcels that you need to be able to track, right? Um, like, say you're shipping uh, organs, like you don't want the 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 kidney to be uh, to be in a super warm environment. You need to be able to track that. So that's what we are enabling by means of Bluetooth low energy sensors, Cura based gateways, and we use the Samsung Arctic as the actual device. Um, Azul is uh, the, the, the JVM that runs underneath, and then we take the data all the way to a Kapua um, based cloud uh, environment running on top of OpenShift. And that's really showing an end to end scenario all the way from the devices uh, to the cloud. And what's more, uh, show something that, like really solving a, a real, a real uh, problem. So that's yeah, that's that's the in a nutshell the architecture of um, of the solution. If you want to learn more and if you're at Summit this week, uh, please um, uh, please join us at, at the booth and uh, at the IoT Pavilion. And uh, that's what I had for you today. Uh, for um, as a conclusion, I wanted to do a shameless plug for the cold starter tonight, uh, from six to nine in room two two o five A, where we are actually going to hack the test bed. So. If you want to learn more about Cura, want to learn more about Kapua, how to use the Kapua's API, um, this is the this is for you. This is going to be a very a very interactive, and you should be uh, yeah learning a lot. So that's what I had. Thanks a lot. I I missed my last slide, which should be thank you all. Uh, you can follow me on on Twitter, and uh, please make sure to stop by the booth to learn more about the testbed and more. Thanks. Questions? Unless we're over time. Kinda. Any questions? No.